Good evening. It's good to see each one this evening, and we're thankful to be gathered together in our prayer meeting and Bible study this evening. Looking forward to this time together, and we're praying much for the children that are heading on their way back home that are from the Children's Club this afternoon, and we rejoice in many of you came along and uh, tonight and heard the gospel. Let us pray and uh, as we begin this time together. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to Thee tonight, and we, with thanksgiving in our hearts, with another opportunity to seek Thee and to know Thy presence with us. Lord, we are thankful for the opportunity to gather ourselves together. And Lord, we pray that You would please encourage us together, one with another. I pray that we would speak of Thy goodness, and Lord, and, and to Thy glory. And Lord, we pray that You would please help us, Lord, to commit our way unto Thee. Lord, I pray that every hymn and word that is said and prayer that is had and, and thoughts that are made, Lord, would, may it draw us near unto Thee and uplift our hearts and encourage us and edify us as we have gathered one with another in Thy presence, Lord. We ask for Thy Spirit's leading through this meeting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take our hymn book and turn with me to 329. 329. And we will stand together and sing our first hymn. In the misty days of yore, Jesus' precious blood had power. In the thief upon the cross to save, like a bird his spirit flies to its home in paradise through the power of Calvary's crimson wave. Stand together and sing 329. may be seated, thankful to be gathered, and together we rejoice in thanksgiving. The blood has never lost its power. We're looking thankful for God's goodness to us. If you have a copy of God's Word, please take it with me to Jeremiah 29, and we look here together, and to the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, and 
Lord willing, our topic tonight will spend this chapter and the two previous. And um, we're praying God to continue to lead us in, as we study the book of Jeremiah together. But we'll look here as we read Jeremiah 29 and begin reading in verse number 1. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar and had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, Jeconi the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, the prince of Judah, and Jerusalem, and the carpenters, and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elsa, Elisa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent under Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat of the fruit of them, eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your, your captivity, and will gather, from, gather you from all nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away, Captive. We'll pause our reading there and we're thankful to be reading together this chapter and what an encouragement and challenge and, and promise that is given and to Judah and Israel and God's people as a whole in Jeremiah 29. And we pray the Lord encourage us from it uh, this evening. If you have a copy of Sunday's bulletin, I encourage you to take it with me and we'll look at a few things here together. And we'll try to take note of maybe a few updated prayer requests that you may bring tonight and um, and please let me know if there are any of those things in just a moment. And uh, but let us continue to pray and uh, faithfully one for another. And uh, we continue to lift up and uh, Greg Bamford and Andy Owen with cancer. And do pray for them and strength for them as they seek to continue to serve the Lord as well. And um, let's also please pray and for Christine's husband, Arthur. And uh, especially as they're hoping their, their wedding anniversary is coming up very soon, and they're hoping to be able to have a meal together and him being in care home. Just pray especially for Christine. The Lord would bless her in that and, and uh, in that time, in this most difficult time with his health and, and memory and things like that that can be quite difficult. And so we continue to pray there. Also, we continue to pray for Paul Trigg's mother with dementia and as he ministers and helps with the family with that condition and situation. And then we'll continue to pray for Natalie Allen as she undergoes cancer treatment as well. And uh, we're thankful. And uh, Phoebe's uh, situation has improved, 
but continue to pray for direction and clarity and understanding really why these so many different seizures have occurred in Phoebe, and, uh, but do continue to remember her in our prayers. And uh, let us also pray for Tony Blake on Saturday. I, was, I believe it was Saturday, wasn't it? And um, his back gave out while he was working. And I know this has been a, his health has been a real struggle. And, um, and this seems a real setback as things were just moving forward with work and things like that. So if we could please pray for Tony, but also if we could please pray for Belinda. It's good to have her here tonight and as she seeks to help there. And uh, may the Lord give sustaining grace and help and, and wisdom and, uh, to her as well in this time and them together. And, uh, but praying much and, uh, for the Blakes uh, this evening. Also, if we could, uh, uh, we want to praise the Lord, and uh, Charlie uh, was able to take off his boot on Monday. The doctor gave him a clear bill of health, and he's been able to walk on his foot, and we want to thank the Lord for that, and I appreciate your prayers for him, and uh, we do thank the Lord for God's goodness there with that. And um, any other health updates or, and, um, or prayer requests or anything at all uh, this evening? Yes, sir. Amen. And uh, Sandra was battling some health things, and uh, he's doing a lot better. And uh, we're really thankful for that and the strength God gave during Holiday Bible Club, especially. And uh, amen to that, Sandra. Praise the Lord. Any other and um, prayer requests this evening? Yes. Absolutely. Let's do pray for Lavender's mom and do pray that the Lord would really soften her heart to the gospel and uh, praying much and uh, for her Lavender. Thank you very much. Let's do pray for Lavender's mom this evening. Do continue to pray for Marley and uh, this is Raya's brother and uh, been going through difficulty lately just praying that most of all he'll know the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior and praying much for him and um, amen. Any other prayer requests or updates this evening? Well, do please pray and uh, for Jordan and uh, Booker. Is Nan's funeral was today, and uh, just he was just reminded of the difficulty of being around family that's unsaved and family that he might not see as often, and uh, just their hardness towards the things of God, and and it was really hard for him to be around that today, and. And so just do pray that the Lord would help minister unto Jordan in this time, but also the Lord would uh, open doors of witness unto his family and soften hearts, especially his dad. And uh, let's pray and, uh, for Jordan's dad that way and, uh, this evening. Any other prayer requests and, uh, this evening? Any other mentions? Yes. Absolutely. Let's do continue to pray for the Rollins as they help with Olivia and her needs. And uh, let us specifically pray that Olivia would uh, know help and peace in her mind, and, and, uh, but ultimately the Lord give wisdom as well to Rachel and Brian to know just the right care that she needs and praying for wisdom for that family and God's leading there in their home. And uh, we're thankful for them. Let's continue to pray for them about these things. Amen. Any other prayer requests this evening? We're well, very thankful to see each and every one. And uh, let us pray specifically for our outreach here at Beaches Road. Let's continue to pray for the Sunday school and the work of uh, the Sunday school amongst children. And I also think of the sunbeams tomorrow praying God's blessing upon that and be with those who are laboring with that. And uh, let us also pray and uh, for the outreach that takes place on Saturdays and whether we're visiting in homes of Sunday school children or uh, going door to door and or also and the open air outreach that takes place. Let's do pray about these different things. And I ask you to please continue to pray. And uh, for work amongst our teens, it's good to see some teenagers here with us tonight and praying each of them and uh, would either grow in the Lord or know the Lord. 
And so may the Lord speak to their hearts tonight, and we're glad that they're here with us. And let's continue to pray about this. Continue to pray for laborers and uh, for uh, ministry here, and um, praying for continued God's leading to help us all grow as a church in laboring for the Lord. And uh, do pray specifically for help and labors needed and for the sunbeams and uh, further help there. Please pray with us about that. And then also continuing to pray for those and seeking to work with children and young people. And uh, let's do continue to pray that God would continue to uh, strengthen Sunday school workers as they continue God's work, but also and uh, would continue to raise up more to continue to labor for the Lord and be a witness in our community. May the Lord help us, each one, to be personal soul winners and uh, wherever we might go uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And just pray about these things. We're thankful for the different church plants and the blessings of this past week. There was over 500 children between all the different churches that were a part of Holiday Bible Club. And it's an encouraging thing to think of so many different children receiving and uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to thank the Lord for the blessings of that. And may we continue to see growth and blessings and consistency of growth and new ones coming along to the Sunday school and uh, as a result and uh, to these things. And uh, do keep in our prayers and the different churches that are listed there in the bulletin and, and those laboring there and their pastors. And I hope that you will continue to pray faithfully for them. And uh, also if we could uh, please and continue to pray and uh, for the housers and they're still in the states they're trying to sort out a visa issue and uh, so please pray for them as they try to sort that out and um, that they'll be able to return soon and uh, but do pray for them also if we could please pray as we think of and uh, over about that way in the states we're praying for andy and carla and as they settle in and uh, andy andy said it's a lot to take in i was texting him the other day and and but we're really praying for them as they his job has led him uh, to be in the states for just uh, for uh, about a year and a half, I think it is, and uh, so let's really pray for them, and that they'll be able to grow in the Lord and find a good church to be a part of, but also uh, the Lord will protect them and be with them as a family there, and um, and and bring them back to us safely. And I know that his parents are praying that way as well, <laughs> and uh, so we're we're thankful for them. But let's pray for Andy and Carla in that big transition and move to the Michigan area of the states. Also, if we could please pray for um, mission outreaches. We think of the work in the Netherlands. Let us please continue to pray and for gospel work in the Netherlands. Also, uh, Zimbabwe, and I was just speaking to Pastor Moreland today, and things are going really well, and God is blessing. And uh, we're thankful for the Lord's work there, and, and uh, all the family, his family seems to be doing well. And we do thank the Lord for that, and we look forward to Him returning as the uh, towards before the beginning of summer. And uh, but we're thankful for uh, their family laboring there faithfully. Let's continue to pray for God's leading in that work, and it will continue to be blessed in a great way there in Zimbabwe. And we're thankful for the church there and, and souls that have been saved, and and God the gospel going forth there. Let's just pray about these things together. Please continue to pray for. Um, these new mission and works that are being started, one out of Liverpool's church there in Norris Green, and another, and uh, they're in Bilthwells out of the church there in Welshpool. And so let's do continue to pray for the Friday clubs that takes place there in the gospel meetings and uh, at these locations, and uh, keep them in our prayers as well. Any other prayer requests or updates this evening? Or... Great to see each and every one. Let us pray for those and not able to be with us and uh, this evening, maybe due to health or different circumstances, and praying the Lord would bring them back to us safely. And also, let's continue to pray for visiting people and that they'll find themselves and uh, encouraged to be a part of this local church. And we're praying the Lord would lead people in that way and uh, by God's direction and leading in their life. And I pray that the Lord would make that very clear. Continue to keep in our prayers and uh, Lucy are here and uh, praying for her health as she's expecting the little one and praying much for the Ahirs and uh, in all of this. And uh, may continue to pray for Lakesh and his salvation and let's remember him uh, tonight. And maybe you have others that are and, uh, in your family that are away from the Lord or unsaved. There's been some of those mentioned tonight. Let's pray for them. I think of James, and uh, let's pray for him, James Prothero, as Nadine's son that's heading to the Navy, and uh, Lord willing, 
And uh, let's do pray for His spiritual uh, understanding of the gospel and, and trusting the Lord and, and really pray for Him before that really would happen. The Lord would really work in His heart this way and uh, before He would endeavor to join the Navy. And, and, um, and so let's really pray for Him and praying for Nadine and the family there in that situation. And uh, thank the Lord for these requests. Any other prayer requests before we go to the Lord in a time of prayer? Yes, sir. Noah? Uh, just for Anita, uh, I don't know exactly how she's doing, but just for the Lord's grace, you know, even though she's perhaps away from a church for a long period of time, and also for her daughter. Absolutely. Let's continue to pray for Anita there in care home as well. And um, love and care for Anita so much and just praying for continued grace for her and strength to be able to maybe visit us sometime. That would be great. And, and I know she loves being visited and, and um, but we're praying for her health and just that she'll be more aware and, and um, in the things and receive good care. Praying for Leah Rose as well, her daughter, and uh, that she'll... Remember the things that she's learned here while she was with us in Sunday school and things and praying for her much. Amen. Well, let's find someone to pray with this evening and uh, encourage you to maybe move about and we'll have a time of prayer together and uh, be very good. If our teenagers could try to find a, another student or a, an adult to pray with, and uh, that would be great. And maybe uh, our, some of our students will move around to them or adults. And then, or you can find someone to pray with though. And so let's seek the Lord together. And uh, may the Lord encourage us to pray faithfully. And I'll close in prayer and, uh, in just a moment's time. May we have a fervent prayer meeting together. God bless.
heaven. Father, Lord, we come to thee tonight and we thank you for this precious opportunity to be able to pray with one another. But ultimately, Lord, to gather before thy throne one with another and to obtain mercy and help in time of need. We need grace to help, Lord. We, we really do. And Lord, we are nothing without thee. Lord, we are undeserved of thy at least of graces, but Lord, we know that thou dost desire to bless thy children. But Lord, I pray that you would please help us, Lord, to honor thee. Lord, I pray that you would forgive us, Lord, of anything that might be in our heart that would keep us, and uh, Lord, from communing with thee even now. I pray that we would search our hearts to be able to determine that we are right with thee, our God, and Lord, that we might understand what the will of the Lord is. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would help us, and uh, Lord, to take every opportunity to be able to be praying as a praying people. Lord, we know that thy word has encouraged us to pray without ceasing. There is never a time where we must, um, Lord, must, where we shouldn't depend on thee. We should always be depending on thee, Lord. I pray that you would please help us, Lord, to uh, truly come to thee, knowing that you are a God who can heal we're thankful that you can heal and from cancer. You can heal from those who struggle with their mind. And you can heal uh, from any ailment, Lord. But, Lord, we know that these things are in thine hands. And, Lord, we know that, you, Lord, you work things uh, together for good to them that love God and are called according to thy purpose. And, Lord, and I pray that, uh, Lord, for thy people that are suffering, Lord, I pray that you would help them to see with patience, Lord, thy perfect work. And Lord, I pray that you would help them, Lord, to lean upon thee and know that know the wisdom of the Lord. Lord, I pray that we would never try to understand, uh, Lord, thy ways with worldly thoughts, but Lord, keep us of a, in a place of faith, knowing that thy word is faithful, knowing that thy promises are always true. Oh Lord, I pray that we would uh, trust in knowing that you desire that souls will be saved. So as we bring before you uh, tonight Lavender's mom, Lord, what a wonderful thing it would be to bring thee glory to see her come to Christ as, as her Savior. Lord, we think of Natalie Allen. Lord, please work in our heart and save. Uh, Lord, we, we do pray for Lakesh tonight, and I pray that you would please stir in his heart, he and his wife, that they would come to know Christ as her Savior and be saved. I think of James tonight. Lord, work in his heart, Lord, we pray. Lord, we think of other families that are not mentioned this evening. Lord, I think of Aretha's mom and, and family there, Lord, that need Christ. Lord, please save, save her work. And, and um, Lord, I think of Jordan's family. Lord, tonight, going through loss and difficulty. But Lord, I pray that this would stir to the thoughts of the Lord. And Lord, we pray that the hardest heart would be softened by the things of the Lord. And and then in the thought of God, and Lord, we pray that you would do a work by thy Spirit to soften these hearts that are in need of thee, to give understanding by the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, we pray that all the things that may cause a, um, a thought that people might think that there's enough time or they don't believe something that is of truth that is in thy word, Lord, I pray that you would reveal it unto them, and uh, Lord, by thy Spirit, that you are truth. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, I pray for anyone here tonight that does not know thee as their Savior. Lord, I pray that they would understand that they may not have tomorrow. Lord, may they understand the urgency and, uh, of the call to salvation. And for we know not what will be on tomorrow. Life is but a vapor. It appeared for a short time and then vanished the way. I pray that this great truth would charge thy believers even here tonight and us as a church that we would be faithfully finding ourselves serving thee and, and living by faith and not by sight. Oh Lord, I pray that we would be as pilgrims and strangers in this world just passing through. I pray that you would keep us from and uh, clinging to worldly pleasures. Keep us, Lord, from uh, the temptations that we might draw us away from the presence of God in our lives. O oh Lord, we pray that Thou wilt do a thorough work in our hearts, even tonight, Lord, as we gather together. Lord, that we might be stirred in a way that we might love the Lord God with all of our heart and mind. Lord, that we might uh, respond in appropriate obedience unto Thee, because 
we have uh, thought of Thee, and Lord, and You have burdened our hearts in such a way to where we would give Thee all. We would forsake all and follow after Thee. O oh Lord, I pray that we would be willing, as the disciples were challenged, Lord, to count the cost tonight. Lord, that it would be, we would find that our Savior, who bled and died on the cross of Calvary, is worthy of our living sacrifice. Lord, is worthy of our time and everything that we have. And Lord, we, we pray that you would please help us this way. Oh Lord, we pray that we would redeem the time, for the days are evil. As we think of gospel work up and down this land, Lord, we think of even our neighbors here in this area. Lord, we pray that you would please help them as they, in their gospel efforts. We pray for Ebenezer and the Lord's blessing upon them and their work. And Pastor Hayward and his family, Lord, I pray that you would be with them. And Lord, we think of others in the, in the area that would have the truth. Oh Lord, we pray that false teaching, Lord, would be destroyed. And Lord, I pray that you would please um, tear down places that worship false idols. And Lord, and I pray that they would come to naught. And Lord, we ask this for the glory of God, that the f folks that are following these false ways and false teaching, Lord, would recognize the truth that is in Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we pray that you would save um, Muslim people. Lord, we think as, as Ramadan ends and this celebration in a false doctrine and a religion, Lord, I pray that the eyes would be open to the truth of the gospel. Lord, that they would separate and their soul from their culture. And Lord, and they would recognize that they will individually stand before God. And Lord, in judgment. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be faithful to share a witness Lord, I pray for East Birmingham that is in the midst of much of this influence of false religion in Islam. And Lord, I pray that you would make them a bright light and to the Islamic people. Lord, I think of the church down the road that once was a Methodist church but now is a mosque. And Lord, I pray for the, those who go there to worship this false god, Allah. And Lord, I pray that they would be awakened to the truth of the gospel. I pray that they would see that they follow something that will not save, Lord, that does not love them. But Lord, we are thankful that we come to a true God who is love, and Lord, who is just, who is right, who is pure, and who is holy, who has no sin, no iniquity at all. And Lord, we thank Thee that we know truth. Oh, Lord, please stir in the hearts of many who follow a false way. Lord, I pray for those who say as a fool, there is no God tonight. Oh, Lord, awaken their hearts, and Lord, to the very Creator that gave them their breath. And Lord, that they might see the glory of God. Lord, that they might see how wonderfully and beautifully they are made in the image of God. Oh, Lord, may they not miss this. Oh, Lord, we pray for our area. Lord, we pray that you would please awaken homes on this very road of Beaches Road. And Lord, I think of John Street and Lord and Darby Street and Lord and the, the streets that are just right around us here. Lord, I pray that people be compelled to come and worship. Lord, and to seek thee. Lord, that they may seek thee while you may be found. Oh, Lord, I pray that there would be many that would hear the call by Thy Spirit speaking to them even this week by the gospel leaflets that have come through their letterboxes. Oh, Lord, take them up in their hands even now, Lord, as we pray. Lord, knowing that You are able to move the very heart of man. And Lord, we pray that You would please work in a mighty way in this community. Oh, Lord, we pray for a revival and, Lord, amongst Thy people. Lord, that we would be stirred in such a way, and Lord, and know the presence of God here in this place, that you may draw all men unto thyself. Oh, Lord, I pray that there would be a mighty moving of thy Spirit in our hearts. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. Lord, we ask you to please help us to search our hearts. Help us, Lord, to seek after thee. Lord, I pray that we would uh, not be as ones who give up so early in the search for the presence of God. But Lord, we would be like Jacob who would wrestle until you would bless us. Who would not stop until we know that you are with us and your presence will go with us. Oh Lord, we pray that you would please help us. Give us this importunity as we pray. Lord, I pray that you would help us to, Lord, pray as we ought. Lord, teach us to pray. 
Lord, we thank Thee for Thy faithful Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our intercessor, praying on our behalf and for us and to and unto Thee. And Lord, we thank Thee for the assistance of Thy Spirit that guides us as we pray, that helps us and yearns and, and prays and speaks that which we don't even know what to pray. And Lord, we thank You for this work that You are doing in our lives as we come to Thee, Lord. Oh, Lord, we ask You, Lord, to... Help those who have, uh, Lord, fallen away in a backslidden state, as it were. I pray that they would be stirred and awakened. Lord, we even think of tonight's word, Lord, I believe that Thou hast led. And, and Lord, and I pray that, Lord, it would be a message unto each of our hearts tonight. That, Lord, if there are areas of our life in which this world has gripped upon, Lord, I pray that tonight in the mighty power of God, Lord, that it would be torn down. And Lord, and we would be established. And Lord, and walking with Thee. Oh Lord, I pray, re restore us, revive us, stir in us, Lord. A real uh, spirit of godliness and holiness. And Lord, that You might be glorified and honored. Lord, I pray that the young people tonight would grow in the Lord. I pray that they would be stirred to think of the things of Christ. That they would not be content with just... Uh, knowing their soul is saved, but Lord, they would follow hard after Thee. They would be ones who are uh, guilty of being addicted to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and, and to do the things of God, and Lord, and to be concerned about the things that honor the Lord. Oh Lord, please do a cleansing work in our hearts and lives tonight. Draw us near unto the, our Savior. And may we know, uh, Lord, thy holiness and thy grandeur. May our eyes be lifted up. Lord, may we have a fresh vision of thee tonight in knowing who thou art and what thou art able to do in this world in which we pray. Oh, Lord, be with those places, Lord, that are hurting tonight, persecuted countries, persecuted Christians. And Lord, and I pray that they would know the nearness of God and remember the promises of God as it were when Iron Arm Judson was suffering persecution. He remembered that his future was as bright as the promises of God. O oh Lord, lay upon these who suffer for Thee even tonight. O oh Lord, and families who have lost loved ones due to this gospel's sake. O oh Lord, we pray that they would remember the reward that awaits them, and Lord, in glory, as they will continue faithful unto Thee. O oh Lord, we pray for countries that are war-torn and that are yet lost. Oh, Lord, we pray that you would please awaken, Lord, Christians to be the witness in, in such clear way. Give them safety and give them protection that they might point the lost to Christ in places where their life, as it were, is held by a string because of the so many difficulties that they face. Oh, Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, we pray that you would be with our government leaders. We pray for our king. We pray for his family, that they would know Christ. Lord, we pray for our prime minister, that he would know the truth of the gospel and trust the Lord and be saved. We pray for our um, MPs and, and Lord, and those in the house of lords and those who are making laws. Lord, we pray that you would please uh, preserve thy work in this nation. Lord, that the laws that are made would preserve the freedom of the gospel. And Lord, and thy people would take advantage of this freedom to continue in belief and faith and, and furtherance of thy name into the highways and hedges. Oh Lord, help us. Lord, we need thy help. And Lord, in wrath, remember mercy as we consider our nation. And Lord, we pray that you would revive us again. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray these things. Amen. We're thankful to be able to pray with one another tonight. May the Lord help us as we pray and to pray with faith believing. We pray to a God who hears and answers prayer. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Just a few reminders, and uh, as we pray, we look forward to our sunbeams and toddler group and uh, taking place tomorrow, and uh, do be in much prayer and uh, for the different things that are happening and uh, towards the rest of the month. On Saturday is our ladies' uh, tea that will be taking place at East Birmingham. And there will be a bus leaving here between 11 and 11 15. If you'd like to be able to go, and uh, please let us know. And uh, we can arrange that. You can text my wife or just let us know by um, confirmation that we can plan transport appropriately. I hope you won't miss that. I know it'll be an encour encouragement and fellowship and the Word of God and there for the ladies. 
Also, we look ahead to the 20th of April to our next men's breakfast here at Beaches Road and an open air on that day as well. And so I hope you'll begin to invite another gentleman to that men and, um, and be there for that men's breakfast at 10 o'clock on the 20th of April. And I hope, please set aside in your calendars as we said at the beginning of the year and the 27th of April is Crown Hall graduation and it's a Saturday afternoon. You don't want to miss. We want to encourage those who've completed the one year and uh, here, but also we want to um, be able to encourage those who've been with us for a time and uh, just a brief time this term. And so I hope you won't miss that Crown Hall graduation. We look forward to that time together and, um, and praying much about these things. Also, and um, do note and uh, that Students Farewell Service is the 30th of April, which is a Tuesday evening service, and we don't want to miss that. Lord willing, all the students will be with us and uh, on that particular Tuesday and uh, before many of them go home and uh, to their different places. But we're thankful for it, that God's leading in these things, and we leave them all to His hands. And uh, may the Lord continue to bless in, in this way. Let's continue to pray. The Lord would lead us, and uh, specifically, and uh, to the right builder to work on our roof. And uh, we're looking to see the roof replaced this summer. And so continue to pray. The Lord will provide the funds. We're going to have a special offering day in May, but with the intention and that we want to start the work this summer. So the end of May, June, really. And we need to start thinking about actually proceeding and starting the work of seeing the roof replaced before the winter comes again. And so pray with us about that. And we've had a couple different quotes that are vastly, vastly different in range of price. And so just pray as we seek to know the will of the Lord in that and finding maybe some more quotes and different ones that might be able to come along. We know we'll have an honest and a good job for the house of the Lord here. And so do pray for the Lord's leading in direction in that. And uh, thank you for your prayers. At this time, we'll have our offering. We're thankful for the faithful giving of each one here at Beaches Road. God bless you as you give unto the Lord. Let us take our hymn book and uh, there. Oh, just before that, I'll ask the students to come, actually. And um, they'll come this way. And uh, just before we sing our next hymn, thankful to have them here with us. And, but I'll ask them to come. They have a song prepared unto the Lord. You pray the Lord would speak to our hearts as they sing unto the Lord uh, together this evening.
I hope that each and every day, if you're a believer in the Lord, you know that secret place with the Lord. And uh, there is no place like that. We learn to commune with our God. There are many Christians who have been reconciled to God, but they do not avail of their relationship with God like they should. I encourage you, and I hope that you'll draw closer to the Lord this week. And may there be a sweet place of communion with the Lord and uh, as we go from this place this evening. Let us take our hymn book just before the Bible message tonight and join them in singing 409. 409, once far from God and dead in sin, no light my heart could see, but in God's word the light I found, now Christ liveth in me. Stand together and sing 409. seated. If you have a copy of the Word of God, please take it with me to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. We look here and continue in studies in Jeremiah for a few moments this evening. We're thankful for the time of prayer tonight and may we be encouraged to continue to pray one with another and for one another. And we look forward and uh, look forward to the Lord's Day together. Please pray and uh, for Pastor Hill, and uh, he's Esther's father, and uh, you may not know, but he's a pastor of a church, and faithful pastor and minister there. How many years have you been pastoring there, sir? At that location, 23 years. At that location, 23 years, and so ministry beyond that. And we're thankful for his faithful service to the Lord, he and his wife there together, and serving the Lord. 
And uh, but Lord willing, He will be bringing the Sunday morning message to us as well as the gospel evening message. And I look forward to being with you and uh, during that time. And I know we're going to be hear the Word of God. And I'm excited about that. And, and I hope that you'll come praying and ready and praying for Him as He seeks for the Lord's message and uh, for the Lord's day. And uh, let us take the Word of God and we look together. And I want us to read and some of these verses that keep popping up throughout Jeremiah and the studies. And uh, I love, I, I've enjoyed this because there's so many times that we quote things and, uh, and then we find out, wow, Jeremiah's got a lot of these things that we quote right within these pages and chapters. And some of these verses are found here at the, toward the end of our reading. And it says this in verse number 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity." And will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. And what a great promise this would, would come and uh, to Judah and Israel, the people of God as a whole. And uh, let us pray, ask the Lord to help us as we consider these things in Jeremiah. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank You that Thou hast brought us together tonight to seek Thee in prayer. And Lord, we seek Thee in wisdom from Thy Word tonight. I pray that Thy Word would be as that sharp sword piercing to our hearts in the very intents of our heart tonight. I pray that our eyes and our minds would be alert to the Spirit of God. Lord, ready to hear what Thou hast to say. Lord, please, speak. Lord, I cannot speak unless you would speak. And I pray that thy spirit would do a thorough work in our hearts tonight, including mine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We find Jeremiah's messages and that vary in, and sometimes their uh, difficulty and vary in their um, I guess, positive or negative nature of the message in which he would bring from God to the people. And we find throughout these last three chapters, 27, 28, and 29, and um, there's others as well, but we want to look at a few highlights throughout these chapters that kind of help us to see the work that the Lord was doing to bring his people back unto himself. Now, this should help us to understand if we desire to have a right relationship with God and return from a state of being backslidden. In other words, and uh, when we have entered into sin, we've allowed sin to reside in our lives. It has thwarted our communion with God and in turn our service to God and our life that would, should glorify God the way that it ought. There are some things that have happened in our life, but God God wants to bring us back unto himself. And what a wonderful thing it is. We learned in the life of David, there is a way back to God. And I thank God for that great truth in his grace and his mercy that is so undeserved. There is a way back to God. We're thankful for that for each believer that has maybe come off the, the track, as it were, and has fallen back into the temptations of their flesh. And we pray that this message that Jeremiah would bring unto the people of Judah would be a stirring reminder of the, what God desires to do unto us to bring us back unto Him even tonight. I don't know what is the course of your week and the actions in your life currently, but I do know this, that God wants you to be right with Him. He wants to bless you. He wants to work in your life. He wants to help you. But I wondered, one, first of all, do you know Him as your Savior? And if you do, are you walking aright with your Lord? 
Now there's a very interesting thing that was mentioned here, these chapters, and uh, F.B. Meyer would mention that Jeremiah's preaching in this was, called, was a, he titled it, The Ministry of Destruction. Now that's a quite interesting title and uh, for his message that he had. It was a message that spoke of destruction. Now, that doesn't seem too positive of a message, but we've mentioned before that often Jeremiah's word that he would have for the people was never really popular. And uh, in any way, he was called the weeping prophet and uh, as his nickname. And as he lamented over Judah and lamented over the, uh, the things of God and the worship of God. And uh, here, in so many ways, he brought a, a difficult message. But it was through the destruction that God would have planned for Judah and the people of Israel that would bring great restoration. And what a wonderful thing that is. We must recognize this ministry of destruction unto our hearts tonight. When looking at the ministry of Jeremiah, there were many messages of destruction that would be delivered to Judah as God's people. These messages were not popular, but necessary to understand the work that God intended to do in order to restore what had been lost. Understand this, God desires not to do a half work in our life. He desires to do a thorough work in our life. And in God's intention, if we are going to have a right relationship with Him, there isn't things just left unattended to. There's never a time where the Lord says, well, that sin, you can keep a hold of that one and still have communion with me. That's impossible. The Bible says if we regard iniquity in our heart, the Lord will not hear us. There is a breaking of a relationship for any sin in our lives. And I'm thankful that the Lord has a desire to do a thorough work to bring us unto Himself. I want us to consider this work of strongholds that are evil, that need to be pulled down, destroyed. There's a reference in Corinthians Take note of it. You're welcome to look at it in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. And we speak briefly about this thought and of destruction that Jeremiah would speak about in the judgment that would come upon Judah. But in the same way, I want us to consider the destruction that needs to take place of the sinful things in our own lives. And the Word of God says if strongholds are going to be destroyed, here's what he says about them. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ." Now, it's a very interesting parallel there when we think of the ministry of destruction and the message that Jeremiah had for the people of Judah and the work that God was planning to do to eradicate the evil from the heart of people. Josiah tried to do it by tearing down all the altars, but as soon as Jehoiakim came along, it went right back to the evil. It was still in their hearts. I want us to see that God wants to eradicate evil from our lives, that we might be holy as He is holy, that we might walk right with our Lord. When things have risen and exalted themselves against the knowledge of God, it must be pulled down and destroyed. And that's really that the heart of evil things, that sin, when it sets itself up in our life, it's as this description gives us in Corinthians. It has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That sin prevents us from knowing God. That sin in our life is like a wall that keeps us from that relationship and knowing Him in a greater way. And I wonder what strongholds in our lives tonight are keeping us from knowing God. What are the things that are holding us back from growing and really being the Christian that we ought to be? What are those strongholds tonight? You cannot pull them down by 
your organization of life. Carnal weapons do not work. Our fleshly plans will not work. We need God's help with the strongholds in our life. Here we can, we can never know the blessing God can give until the things that are keeping us from God are destroyed. And that picture that is found, that is happening in our lives and the need that is life was a grand picture in Jeremiah's time when he looked to Judah and all the things that were happening and the evil that was in the land and what God and the work that God would do to bring them to a place of restoration. The strongholds must be destroyed. I want us to first consider these strongholds. What are they? What could they be? And what were they for? And what were the things that would be destroyed in Jeremiah's life? Look with me, chapter 27 and verse number 1. And the Word of God says this in Jeremiah 27, In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes, and put, put them upon thy neck, and send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and the king of the Tyrus, and the king of Zidon, and by the hand of the messengers which came, uh, come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Judah." And command them to say unto their masters, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And now I have given all these lands unto the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. We see here there was these areas that must be destroyed. Areas that and had to be pulled down from God. And God would send great judgment. And you say, well, what are some of the things that would be judged? One of the things that would be judged are the very kings of Judah themselves. From time and time again, and they raised up in the land of Judah, and also Israel had some very wicked kings. And they raised themselves up, and they, were, they stood against the knowledge of God. They stood against the things of God. They brought in idol worship. They were a bad influence upon the people of God. 2 Kings chapter number 23 and uh, it tells us, and uh, really the result of after Josiah and uh, was King Jehoiakim that is mentioned here at the beginning of Jeremiah 27. We're reminded of his work, and, and we see more of it in this chapter in 2 Kings 23. But we'll just read the last two verses of that chapter. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he had begun to reign. And he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Zebedah, and the daughter of Padiah and of Ruma. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. You see, the, the kings were evil. There was an evil, and the kings themselves, not just the people, needed to be judged, but the kings themselves would be thrown to captivity and left to Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon as a servant under the Lord's hand to be a judgment upon those kings. The bad influence would have to cease. In order for Israel to be right with God, the very ones that were influencing the nation had to be thwarted and stopped. It was by their decree much idolatry was brought into the land. It was by their action their leadership would be atrocious. Jeremiah 29 tells us in, in the Scriptures in verse number 21, the Word of God says this, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab, the son of Kaliah, and of Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, which prophesy a lie unto you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. And of them shall be taken up a curse by all the captivity of Judah, which are in Babylon, saying, The Lord make thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire." 
because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them, even I know and I am a witness, saith the Lord. What a terrible influence that the people that should have been leading and influencing the people of God to follow after God. I mean, you think of the, the, the downhill spiral from that of Saul and David. You think of when they found David, a king after uh, God's own heart, a man after God's own heart, and then now this is where they are at. These type of kings, the influence that was upon the people. I want us to think as a stronghold here, as these kings would be judged, first of all, the bad influence in our life, if we're going to be right with God, must cease. Let us consider that which is influencing us tonight. We can, we can always say, well, I'm, I'm, um, um, I'm okay, I'm separate from that. But really, it was the king that influenced the entire nation. And in the same way, the influences in our life have more of an effect on us than we really realize. Oh, may the Lord help us. For many people, our upbringing and leadership has built strongholds that fight against the Word of God in our lives. What influence needs to be pulled down by the mighty hand of God in our life? We must consider and understand that we all have been brought up in this wicked old world. And there are many influences from this old world that push upon us systems of government, systems in this world, worldly systems that often are an influence on our life and they are thwarting the very knowledge of God and living for God the way that we ought because we're slaves to the way that we've been brought up. We are slaves, as it were, and of the, way, the things that have been given to us as truth. The king had said it. The influence had said it. This is the norm. They established it in all the land and even made laws about it. And we think of how much of this world is against the things of God. We must be careful tonight to submit unto the Lord our influences. You know, many of us may seek to grow and be right with God, but we have had so many things that have been a bad influence on our life, we don't even know how to think right or straight because we've been brought up in such a way. As it were, you could imagine the children of some of these kings of Israel and Judah. That's all, that was normal to them. Some of them that reigned for years in evil and difficulty. This was all they ever grew up knowing, never knowing what it was like to have a godly influence in their life. You know, young people, one of the greatest privileges that you have are aged Christians at this church. Godly influences. And what's sad is that sometimes those godly influences will come into our life and they try to set us right and help us and encourage us in the things of the Lord. And we in our youth look to the influences of the world that have raised us in worldly ways. But I thank God for aged Christians growing up that pointed me to Christ. That pointed me that were a right influence on my life. That's a great privilege of a church. When we come together, uh, aged women can help younger women. Aged men can help younger men. We find this in the Scriptures. This is the way God intended it, that, that there would be a help and encouragement that would happen in the church. Oftentimes, young people, they only know the bad influence that this world has brought them up in. Oh, may the Lord ever help us to be soft, to seek the Lord that He may tear down the bad influences that are in our life, that we might be right with God again. We think of another stronghold. The kings would be sent off even themselves into judgment. But then we also see, not only that, but the prophets would be sent to judgment. 
In verse number, in chapter 27, in verse number 10, we'll read just a few verses quickly here. And it says this, For they prophesy a lie unto you, and remove you far from your land, and that I should drive you out, and ye should perish. Verse number 16, the Bible says this, And I also spake to the priests and to all this people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. Chapter 28 and verse number 15, the Bible says this, Then said unto the prophet Jeremiah, unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I cast thee from off the face of this earth, of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. You think there was judgment that was coming to the very prophets. Though those who should have been holding the word of truth were bringing a lie to the people. I think of how much false doctrine has been built up in the name of religion in people's minds and thoughts. You know, what we find oftentimes in churches today in England is because so many churches have closed, so many places have emptied out, that oftentimes when people are trying to come find the Word of God, there is so many different people that come attend from so many different doctrinal backgrounds. And it's an interesting thing. Because oftentimes, if it's something outside of what God's truth usually says and clearly says, then, oh, there's a struggle to grow, to follow the Lord. There's always the hang-ups, the distractions in this way. And the very prophets themselves were saying, oh, don't worry. The vessels here, they're, they're going to return soon from, from Nebuchadnezzar. Don't worry about that. Everything's going to be okay. And it was a lie. And their urgency that would be suppressed by the false prophets. Oh, here we see for many their stronghold has built, been built on lies said in the name of God. We must be careful to avoid false teaching from the Word of God. 1 John chapter 4 and uh, the Word of God says this, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 1. Wherefore laying... uh, Excuse me. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse number 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction... And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Isn't that interesting? There's great division that is brought. And oftentimes an unbeliever can look at the church today and they see just that. They see, why would I want to be a Christian? I don't even know what church to go to. Where is truth? Every, all the Christians just fight with each other. Isn't it interesting how the devil has allowed and the false prophets have submitted themselves to false ways in this way, and it has caused such great division in the church. I wonder, are we holding on to false teaching in our lives? May we have an open heart to hear the word of the Lord, even when we don't like to hear it. Oh, we don't maybe not like the message that we might hear from the Word of God, but it is sent to us to correct us, reprove us, and instruct us in righteousness. Our teaching must be biblical. As we study God's Word, never can Scripture be interpreted by a system of belief. But God's Word alone should dictate truth. And how important that is. That we don't allow systems of this world created by man to dictate the Word of God and its interpretation. The Word of God alone is sufficient. And I'm thankful for this. How many have grown up hearing the Bible taught from a false perspective? And it has hindered many from lives from continuing to grow and be faithful. 
Oh, may the Lord help us to be solid on the word of God. We see another stronghold is found in Jeremiah 27 and verse number 2. The Bible says this, Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes, and put them upon thy neck, and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the Ammonites, the king of Tyrus, the king of Zidon, the hand of the messengers, and which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, the king of Judah. There's one more judgment that would take place. And that we see here is not only would it be under the kings of Judah and Israel, not only would it be on the prophets, but also it would be upon the other nations surrounding them. Isn't that interesting that these Ammonites, the Moabs, these, were false, these people worship false gods anyways. And here we have a great picture of the world that will be judged. And here we see the world in which Judah lived was surrounded by nations that worshipped other gods. And I think of strongholds in our life, and I wonder how much of the world has a stronghold in our life that keeps us from following God. The Bible says in 1 John 2 verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for the love of the Father is not in them. How many have welcomed the world's idols to be a part of their daily living? We think of how oftentimes the, the, the ones of Moab and the Ammonites and these gods of other nations and there in Canaan and they, the, how the people of Israel took those gods and even the gods of Egypt and that, were up, that pictured the world even in itself. And how many times these things crept back into the homes of the people. We must be diligent to keep the world out of our Christian living. We must be diligent to separate ourselves unto God from this world. Separation happens when we turn our eyes upon the Lord and we seek His holiness and we seek to follow after Him and we leave this wicked old world behind and everything with it all of its ideas, all of its systems, that the Word of God may be our guide. Oh, could these strongholds be the thing that need to be destroyed in our life? Maybe the world, false teaching, or even bad influence? May the Lord tear these things down in our lives. I leave with this word of encouragement, and here, this, not only... Do we see the strongholds that must be destroyed, but the search that must take place? And I leave us with this challenge and encouragement that what the Lord wants to do as these things need to be destroyed, and one might say as they seek the Lord, how can I uh, you know, get rid of this thing in my life? There's this worldly influence, this, this worldly thing that I do, this temptation that I have. How could I do such a thing? Well, only the Lord can help us with this. We need God. The Bible says that the pulling down of strongholds and that work, we can't do it with carnal weapons. We can only do it with spiritual weapons that are mighty through God. The Word of God says this in verse number 11, for, in verse chapter 29, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I want us to consider the restoration that God desires in our life and the search that must take place. God has a promise of an expected end if these things are destroyed in our life. We should consider the very sins that we are holding on to, the very things in our life that we love, that we know are against God. Those things that we know that are against God, I don't know what they are. Maybe a lack of service to God. Maybe laziness. Maybe um, a lack of faith. Maybe it's a, a lack of being able to tell another person about Jesus Christ. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's faithful Bible reading. Maybe it's faithful prayer. Whatever it is tonight in your heart, I pray the Lord would stir us up to know that God wants to tear that down and establish you. Oh, look here. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. What a loving God. He says, I don't want evil for you. I, I, I have an expected end, something you can look forward to, he was saying to Judah. I've got something you can look forward to. Do you know all of us have something to look forward to tonight? If 
if you're seeking relationship with God and knowing God, you've got an expected end, something to look forward to. And you say, well, well, how do I find that? The Bible says this, Then ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, and shall search for me with all your heart. The search that must take place is a search with all of our heart. Not one piece of our heart can be left in the world, a bad influence, false teaching. Not one piece of our heart can be held on to, but all of our heart must be given to God. Oh, I wonder, have you given all your heart to the Lord in seeking after Him? For there is a great promise for those who will search Him with all their heart. He says this, And I will be found of you. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. What a wonderful promise He gave to Judah. And what a wonderful promise God gives to us that if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I wonder tonight, will you search Him with all your heart? Maybe there's strongholds in your life that you know that need to be destroyed. I encourage you, if you know there are strongholds tonight, don't try to go home and make a plan. Go home and fall on your face and pray. And ask God to help you. And seek the Lord. And search Him out with all your heart that He may be honored and glorified in your life again. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank Thee for Jeremiah's ministry. Though it was difficult for Judah to hear of the captivity that they would face and the submission to such a wicked king as Nebuchadnezzar, but Lord, we are thankful that they could have an expected end by the destruction of these things that were in their lives that were so evil. Lord, we are thankful that the thoughts that they could know that the Lord had towards them was thoughts of peace. Lord, not of evil. But a thought to know that the Lord would bring them and restore them back into the land in which He had promised them. Please, Lord, I pray tonight that whatever strongholds there is in our hearts tonight, that through Thee, Lord, they would be torn down and we would search for Thee with our whole heart. Please help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us take our hymn book and turn to 455. We'll look here in our hymn together, 455. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. Let us stand together and sing 455.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we cannot doubt your tender mercy, for you have been our guide. And Lord, I pray that you would please help us to see the shepherd's call to our hearts tonight, to see you guiding to correction, guiding to salvation, Lord, guiding to thy very side. Oh Lord, I pray that we can see by faith that you have led us all the way. Thank you, Lord, for you are faithful. Please help us to return unto thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.